one of the concerns that I have, and this is probably as good a time to talk about it as any, is one of the things that has alarmed me the most is that the major studios have been making more and more a strong push to, toward de-cinema for exhibition. You know, Sony particularly uh, has, is now pushing its new 4K projector, uh, which actually I think uh, maybe Rob and I might get into this a little bit later, I think is essentially uh, uh, a device to, to market uh, 3D. Uh, and once we have, you know, essentially D-Cinema established throughout, you know, domestic, domestic exhibition in the United States, <laughs> Uh, and they are hoping, claiming that that can be done within the next 18 months, there will be no film prints made anymore. And at that point, we will have essentially digital exhibition. Now, I've had, I don't know if you guys have had this or not, I've had a very uh, uneven experience with digital exhibition. I mean, when it's really done in the best conditions and the best control, it can look pretty good. But depending upon the screening venue, the maintenance of the equipment, the alignment of everything, the programming, uh, it, uh, the reliability of the software, it can also look very, very bad. Of course, film prints can look very bad. We know that as well. But the thing is, we are moving toward essentially a complete electronic cinema in terms of exhibition. And the, uh, especially for movies that are going to be born digital, finished digital, you know, digital intermediate or master, and then digital exhibition. Everything that I've seen so far anyway, and you, you may disagree with me on this, really does not look right to me. Now, you know, admittedly, I've got an inborn prejudice of 35 or 40 years of, of shooting film and loving film and loving that look, and it's sort of baked into my sensibility. Those of you, you know, that are 25 years younger than I am, you know, may feel differently about it. But there, there is something I worry that we're going to be losing as we move toward D-Cinema. The other thing that is, is potentially very worrisome in that regard is once we no longer make film prints for, I'm talking about these huge, you know, opening weekend pictures that open on 2,500, 3,500, you know, screens, uh, the pencil pushers that do a lot of the budgeting and so forth are, are going to have, at least in their minds, a case to saying, well, now, tell me again, why are we making a film out negative if we're not making any film prints for exhibition? And as you all know, under current state of technology and for what we can see for the future, at least with the archivists and preservationists I've talked about, there is no such thing as an archival video format. You know, so if we start to eliminate the film out negatives for movies that are born digital, they're going to be very vulnerable. Um, there's a report that came out in 2007. If you don't know this report, it's called The Digital Dilemma. How many of you have read it? Do you, do you know about this? Yeah. Well, you can go online on the, uh, on the Oscar, on the uh, Academy website, uh, Site Tech Council, and you can download it, can't you? Yeah, I think maybe if you contact the Academy directly, you can. It uh, was a report that was uh, issued by the SciTech Council, uh, Andy Maltz, the Academy uh, representative, uh, and co-authored with Milt Schefter, who's very involved in archival and preservation issues. And uh, there, uh, it, it's very enlightening reading, actually. It's very frightening. And there's a follow-up report, which is still in draft form, that should be coming out later this summer, called The Digital Dilemma 2. And it deals with the even more frightening uh, uh, scenario of what can happen for our independent filmmakers and documentarians, documentarians mainly now shooting a lot of their work on digital video. Uh, I, 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 I don't feel that it's you know my position, since it's still in draft form, to talk about it very much, other than to say that for filmmakers that are independent and documentarians and do not have the financial resources behind them to constantly migrate their materials to new formats to essentially assure that it's, it has some archival credibility, it's, it's a very frightening thing. 95% of the work I have done and which I hope to continue to do 
I will be shooting on 35 millimeter film because as you can see from, from Rob's presentation, there are compelling reasons to continue to use motion picture film as a capture medium, especially when you're talking about you know, large dramatic films that essentially are in the tradition of the, 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 the entertainment films that we've done. I mean, my friend Wally Pfister says he will never give up film. My other friend, Roger Deakin, says he will never go back to film. I mean, so, you know, this, we have this kind of polarity going on now. Uh, I tend to sort of feel more support for Wally's position. And, uh, you know, he was represented at the, um, uh, at the Academy event by uh, uh, a taped interview and a clip of a scene he showed from Inception. Now, the, uh, as you know, Inception was shot on film, and they had hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of of uh, video effects and, uh, and um, green screen work and so forth, but they essentially decided to go ahead and shoot it on motion picture film. The film that I did last winter up in Alaska, Everybody Loves Whales, is probably going to have over 250 visual effect shots. We did a tremendous amount of green screen work. All that will be scanned. It'll be manipulated digitally and essentially rendered back out to film. But, you know, I shot it on film because it, I want it to be in that tradition of the large-scale adventure film. And somehow, in a film on a motion picture like that, for me to have shot it even, even though I haven't used the Alexa, but with whatever technology I know on video in that particular kind of environment, I think would have been downscaling the look and the feel and the emotional presence that I wanted so I shot it on film. And most of the films that I do are essentially actor-oriented, script-driven, performance, dramatic films and comedies. And so for, for me and the kind of films that I want to do, I can't imagine, even as the technology with video increases, wanting to abandon it. You know, I touched briefly on the notion of the archival issues, which is something that I think all of us should be, you know, getting into, I really advise you to get a hold of that uh, Digital Dilemma report because, as I said at the end of my presentation at the Academy, uh, despite the fact that I had been told by a number of studio people, well, John, you know, when the film is, uh, goes into the theaters, your work is finished. You know, you don't have much to say about it. Well, that's not exactly true. I was at a screening room on this uh, studio lot uh, uh, three days ago. I was asked to come in and look at a new 35-millimeter print made off the negative, some work they had done restoring the negative of American Gigolo, which is a film I did here in 1980. You know, I mean, it's a film that's over 30 years old now. You know, and I mean, uh, my feeling is that as long as we're alive, and even after we've gone, the people that are behind us, uh, cinematographers that care about the films that we've done, will be the custodians of our films. And that's why I think you, we all need to be really aware of these issues of archival and preservation. <laughs>